have Nicole Eller and Alicia Piazza from the Spark Social who are members and they are um, social media experts. And they're here to share with us COVID-19 do's and don'ts of digital marketing. Okay, so we are the Spark. Um, we're a social media marketing agency, whoops. Um, a little bit about us, Nicole, you wanna take it away? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm Nicole Eller, I am, um, you know, uh, Alicia and I are business partners and we uh, came together to um, really help small businesses and our communities uh, market better on social media. And uh, our core values really align with the core values of many of the organizations that um, we're, you know, we work with, including the chamber. Um, we're about community cause and connection. And you'll see that as we go through what we're talking about here and our um, sort of overarching vision for our company and for everything that we do is this idea of doing good socially. So. Uh, with that in mind, we're going to bring you as much information and as much good as possible today. Uh, but we do also have a couple offers for you at the end. So if you're interested in working with us a little bit more, there'll be an opportunity to do that. Um, we do take these uh, you know, um, core values very seriously. And you'll see that in all of the work that we do um, from workshops like this to one-on-one -on -one advisory with the Rhode Island Small Business Support Program to um, you know, the, the work that we do inside of our team and making sure that they are, um, you know, not just uh, well-trained, competent, and talented, but also happy and balanced. <laughs> so I think that sort of sums it up. <laughs> yeah. So um, doing good socially, we, we don't just use that as our saying. It's something we put into our, val uh, our work and what we do. We do a lot of workshops like these. Um, and, you know, these workshops are not like a hook or anything. They're really, if these workshops are put together that if this, we want you to take away something that you can do today and put into action. So we really make sure that when we do any type of panel discussion, workshop, whatever it is, webinar, that there's true value in it for the businesses or people who are attending so that they can bring that into their social media and marketing and Hopefully you'll give us a follow on Instagram. Our team runs our Instagram and they do a really good job and you'll get to know them a little bit if you head on over there and follow us. So today we wanna to talk about going digital. Did I skip a slide there, Nicole? No, we're no, not. no, no. Going digital in a COVID time. It's been a weird time, so. Yeah, like so, <laughs> uh, so we wanted to start with just kind of talking a little bit about, um, you know, the risks versus the rewards of going digital. And there's a huge amount of risk to not going digital at this point. Um, you know, we've been in this pandemic for, uh, uh, what is it, 10 months now. Um, and <laughs> we don't like to call attention to that fact, but you know, if you haven't gone, if you haven't gone digital yet, whether you are in sales or you are in, um, you know, you have a brick and mortar um, and you haven't taken things online, you haven't transitioned, uh, you're at great risk of, you know, appearing out of business or closed um, losing your uh, business to com your competitors who were able to transition, um, not being visible to new customers, new prospects, um, looking a little like dated, maybe like there's a reason you haven't gone digital um, and then virtually disappearing from your network, all of which, you know, are not great for your long term success. Um, so while the, um, you know, the risk to not going digital is uh, great. The rewards are also great and the risk to going digital is very minimal. <laughs> you just have to do it. Um, and that's pretty much it for that one. Um, so we'll just do a quick uh, overview. You know, we, we weren't sure who was going to be in the room. Um, so uh, just kind of talking about what platform is right for my business and brand. This is very high level. Um, if you're going to be with us for our next workshop, which I hope you all are, um, it's going to be very a deep dive into Instagram marketing. Um, but as you're starting out, um, you know, online and you're trying to figure out, well, who am I connecting with? Who am I, you know, who do I need to reach? What do I have to share? You know, is it, is it video? Do I have tons of photos? Am I a photographer? Um, is there content that I can engage with um, that I enjoy working with? Um, but also, where does my audience spend their time? Are they on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram? Are they on TikTok? Blessed if they are. Um, how much time, and then how much time do I have to invest? So again, going back to that TikTok, you better have a lot of time. Um, but you know, if you're going with something that's a little bit more low key, like a Facebook or a, a LinkedIn, it's just about understanding how you're investing that time. 
So for this conversation, we're going to focus on um, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and we're not going super deep because I think, um, you know, there's a lot of high level questions that we can answer just right here um, about understanding that Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn are probably the most ubiquitous. They're the most widely used. And so you can think about it this way, um, that if you are in a space where you don't have a ton of photography, you're not comfortable on camera, um, you don't necessarily, or, or you aren't sure what to do with uh, visuals, then wait on Instagram and come to our next workshop. <laughs> it will help you out. Um, but for Facebook and LinkedIn, those are two really great, as many of you probably know, um, both B2B networking and basic open, like just any business can really do well on especially Facebook and also LinkedIn. Um, so just, we have just a little bit of like demographics. If you're thinking about who it is that you're trying to reach, you know, um, who are they out there and how are you gonna reach them? I think we're missing a stat on <laughs> men on Facebook, but that's okay. <laughs> I guess they're just opposite anyway. So um, you'll notice that Facebook and Instagram tend to be more, um, you know, female oriented and LinkedIn is more uh, male. It's just a heavier volume of people use uh, the type of demographic using it. Um, but it's also important to note that if you're looking to connect with decision makers, that link LinkedIn is a bit better for that. But if you're looking to connect with the general public or build different kinds of relationships, you know, thinking about industries, um, Facebook can be wonderful for that as well. Um, and both are really good for building relationships. Uh, just as I know, we will leave plenty of time for questions at the end. Yeah. Too, so yeah, we're gonna we can get into more specific. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, um, so this is just a quick slide. Um, you know, we can definitely send out these slides as well. Um, but uh, the one thing I want to point out here is that Instagram and Facebook are shopping platforms as well as connection platforms. And so when we do our, we, we go in depth on Instagram, we will talk a little bit more about that and what it takes to kind of get that set up. Um, but these are just some high level ideas of what does well on every platform. So like we said, Facebook, practically everyone, Really great for moms and parents if you think about the fact that all of us are either moms or we know that our mom is regularly on Facebook, um, you know, posting and pinging us with things. Um, it can be a great space for that. But the one to not forget is that it's actually still the number one B2B uh, sale, uh, sales and networking site. Um, LinkedIn has its challenges. Um, it's great for B2B, it's great for networking. But as many of you might know, you also get fired at with a ton of lead generation, just basic messages and we'll talk a little bit more about that in uh, just a couple of minutes. Next slide. So we all know this guy. You can just go right to the next slide. He's on the next slide too. <laughs> um, so finding your people on social, um, you know, understanding that um, there are so many different ways right now to use digital social media to find your people from LinkedIn and Facebook groups to association and chamber events like this one specific events just for networking, um, for closed referral groups, open referral groups, you know, all kinds of, um, you know, virtual conferences have changed so much. Um, there's one that we go to, um, I believe it's the Ad World Conference, and they've changed the way that you interact with people. Because you guys know, you go to a conference, and if you're lucky, you might bump into one of the, like, the keynote speaker or somebody really fascinating. Um, but in these new virtual settings, you can actually make a point to bump into those types of people. So don't discredit, don't discount the, um, the value of virtual conferences and getting in front of people that you may not have otherwise gotten in front of because now it's, it's just a very open world. Um, so a couple of things, and I'm gonna tease my, uh, Smith because <laughs> she, she, had, she had logged in without her camera on and I was like, uh-oh, um, but obviously she's driving, that's different. Um, but you know, turn on your camera, make a goal to genuinely connect with someone, uh, one, at least one other attendee. Um, ask open-ended questions and be personable and authentic. So don't try to be someone you're not. Don't try to be salesy. Try not to be salesy unless that's really your personality, which is fine. Um, but don't go looking to pitch or sell in these meetings. You're making connections. And that's the most important thing to keep in mind here. Um, and, you know, you may want to wear pants or, you know, I mean, if you're comfortable in a dress, then wear a dress. That's what I did this morning. <laughs> so pants are good. Next slide, please. I'm like, what is he wearing? Uh, I think they're jorts. <laughs> yeah, look, he's wearing jean shorts. <laughs> um, so going into making real connections. Now, these are all messages that I've received. You can see, you know, hello, Nicole. Hey, Nicole. Um, and then the one on the other side, which I didn't screenshot the, all, the whole thing. Um, the, the 
the don't on that side is as, if you can see here, the name up, um, the name of the person that I got the message from after a nice connection message was Steve Pastora. <laughs> the name he signed off on in this particular message is Ravi Ab Ab Abuvela. Um, yeah, it's clearly a copy and paste lead generation message. And he did not harass me more than three times. <laughs> Uh, but he did send me three different messages and this last one was signed off with the wrong name. So now I, you know, now I'm completely disconnected. I'm like, all right, I gotta, you know, I gotta unconnect from this person because it's clearly not who they said they were. Um, that happens a lot. Don't be that guy. So if you are using um, templated messages, make sure that you're going in and you're <laughs> making sure it's your name on it. Preferably you're using custom templated messages. So messages that you created in your voice because of who you are and who you're trying to reach and you're going in and personalizing them. So I think what that gets me is like when they go to the, like wanna like take time to go to someone's website or their profile and insert like a little like tip or a little tidbit about like, hey, I saw on your website that you work with these types of businesses. Can you tell me more about that? Yes, 100%, like don't. So that takes me perfect segue to the second one here, which is another don't. This person was very personable, very friendly, um, and he did change his message each time, but his call to action was always the same. He wanted me to schedule a 15 minute call with him. I don't have 15 minutes for you right now. And I don't anticipate myself giving you 15 minutes of my time when I don't know who you are. I don't know, I don't understand what your offer is because you haven't given me an opportunity to learn more about it. And you know, you just keep firing the same call to action at me. No, none of the, um, you know, did you take a look at my own information? Did you really look to see if I was a good connection? Because from your connection request you did, but from the follow-up messages, we're just on a you know series of lead generation messages and that's all it is. People can tell when you are just firing away for the numbers only. And honestly, as a digital marketer, it's really irritating. <laughs> I think that this message could have been in the middle, could have been so much stronger with an open-ended question and actually taking the time to like go back and forth and build a little rapport there. Absolutely. Uh, even just a request to not necessarily like, let's chat about all this stuff I just told you about ROAs and, you know, ROIs and whatnot, but more of an open-ended question. I'd love to learn more about your business. You know, make it feel genuine, make it, don't just feel genuine, be genuine. Um, and then, um, the other one on the end here, so I said do-ish because this one was fun. She did actually send me this message that said, hey, oh, first name, as if, you know, she had been sending these like fake or these um, templated messages and didn't bother to copy and paste my name in. And it's a haha, just kidding, Nicole. Saw you're in the same industry, wanted to connect. The reason I say do-ish is because she never followed up with that. If she had followed up and said, you know, I, I'm, you know, thanks for connecting. I'd love to have a conversation or thanks for connecting. You know, even you can say this is a little bit more about me. I'd love to know more about you. If you need, if you feel that with people you're talking to, um, putting yourself out there first is valuable, do it. Definitely do it. But make sure that you give it back to them so that it's a conversation. You're not just firing, um, you know, you're not just firing away in a sales mindset of numbers, 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 numbers. If I fire away at 50 people, I'll get, you know, uh, 10 people that get back and that'll get me two appointments and that'll get me one close. Don't do that. Don't, yeah, don't it's kind of like the equivalent of going to a networking event and just tossing your business card to everyone there, like spray yes. and pray. And we all have seen that person. We have all gotten those business cards. <laughs> it doesn't work. You put the business card down on the table or throw it out before you walk out of the room. Um, that's a true story. Um, so the other two things I want to point out here with like making real connections on LinkedIn is LinkedIn actually gives you more options than just firing away with these kinds of um, text messages. So um, if you look down here at the bottom, you have a video option. So you can actually, this one actually allows you to invite someone to a video call. Um, obviously, I recommend, especially for those millennials in the room, that you, you warn them first. <laughs> We're not used to getting calls without being warned first, and we don't like it. <laughs> um, but this other one, you can actually upload a video straight into the message. And this other one over here is really cool. So if you are not yet comfortable on video, which we will go into encouraging you to be, Spark will always encourage you to just get comfortable on camera, not a big deal, especially in these times, but you can easily send audio clips through um, LinkedIn Messenger, which can help build that rapport. So maybe you've sent a, um, a text message and now you're just trying to follow it up so they can kind of understand a little bit more about you and your personality. And you know that when you get in a room with someone that you, you have an effect on them because it's your personality, it's who you are, um, and it's, you, you're very fun, you can convey that a little bit better by using 
video messaging is preferred, but if you're not ready, use an audio message and say, hey, and um, yeah, I'm not gonna say any questions, but <laughs> we can yeah. either hold something and go ahead, Alicia. I have a question. This is LinkedIn messaging, but could we easily use these same tactics on Facebook Messenger, Insta DM or email, Nicole? I would say yes, but I would say be a little bit more careful with it because um, just because uh, people aren't necessarily expecting those conversations in those spaces. So make sure that you have a connection with someone first. So like there's a few people who I know that we're in the same networking groups, which I think is the next slide. Um, if you're going to be uh, sending messages to them, you know, find a commonality, be in the same groups as them, um, reach out with a good reason, start a conversation in an open forum and then see if you can bring it to a DM. Um, you know, like I really, I really loved your response. I really wanted to connect with you, especially um, people who make calls to connect with someone. Perfect timing, you know, get in there, talk to them, um, but just uh, don't get spammy with it. That's all. <laughs> um, so starting good conversations in groups and Alicia and I took a few minutes of uh, kind of going through various groups, trying to find some good conversations that had been started. Um, and we just had some uh, examples, you know, a lot of people, I think, when, they, when they're thinking about networking in groups, they tend to just drop um, their information in and run away. <laughs> and they're like, hey, here's who I am, here's my promotional message, it's Thursday and I'm allowed to do that today, bye. And obviously that's not going to really do a lot for you unless you get lucky and someone really wants to connect with you. So um, these were just some great examples of those conversations that can start in the group and then you can take to a DM, you can take to a private conversation, you can make a phone call if you uh, have a phone number to do so. Um, so uh, on the left, you have um, just a, a general question. So someone so is asking a question in the group um, about people's businesses and giving everybody an opportunity to answer. Um, you know, what do you do and why? So your why is always important to people you're connecting with. And then on the right is just a straight up, like I'm looking to connect with these people because I have a reason. Please DM me, um, let's reach out, let's talk, let's have a conversation. And she got a lot of um, traction on that. And so it probably made a bunch of new connections for people who, you know, that's where one of those people may actually become a viable referral resource. And so that's kind of what you're going into with this is, um, you know, I have to give my time, I have to give my expertise, I have to give my energy to meet new people. It's not just to say, you know, say and pray. <laughs> I think, you know, before COVID, uh, it, you, we went to networking events, and it took time to build relationships, and it, it took time to drive there, it took time to attend and get to know people. And all of a sudden, we get behind digital screens and we just think that connection should happen faster, but it's the same amount of rapport building. And that's a big thing that I think is missing in this digital time. I would definitely, I mean, hundred percent agree. We run into that even with our own um, clients where we have to, you know, we're, we're kind of like, okay, we've got to dial back because you're missing um, a lot of that uh, emotional build to making that decision. And you have to find a way to recreate it in social and, and in virtual. Um, and that can be really tough. I think we all have experienced that at this point is that um, you know building rapport online is not easy because that screen automatically puts a barrier between you. So you have to figure out how to break through. Um, and that may require a few more meetings than you're used to or a slightly different process than um, to find those people than you're used to. Um, so this one is fun um, and I can't take credit for this idea. I mean, it's a simple idea, but I think it, I'm pretty sure it came from something Alicia was working on with a LinkedIn client. Um, was so inviting people to a virtual connection, but then upping the ante by sending them like a virtual gift card to Duncan, because you'd probably have bought their coffee anyway. So just send them over a $5 gift card, you know, obviously you have to have the money to invest in that, but it's that next level thing. Um, and, you know, Starbucks is your thing. That's cool too. I like Starbucks. Um, <laughs> um, but send them the, uh, send them a virtual gift card right before the meeting or like a couple days before to say, Hey, I just wanted to make sure you had that coffee for our virtual session. Look forward to talking to you on Saturday, uh, whatever, Saturday, Friday. I don't know. <laughs> Our days, they don't mean anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, so make sure you're on time to your meeting. Um, we've all done the pre-Zoom time warp. You know, it's, it's a meme. It's been memefied for a reason. We're all like, okay, I've got 10 minutes. My Zoom starts in 10 minutes. Do, 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 do. Uh, it's five minutes after my meeting was supposed to start. What happened? We all do it. Don't do it. You know, if you have to make a point to actually log in 10 minutes before the meeting, you know, we all get put in the waiting room now because of security reasons. So it's fine. <laughs> um, dress appropriately, preferably from head to toe. I am so guilty of the sweatpants and the nice shirt thing. So guilty. Leggings, sweatpants, whatever. But 
you know, it does help you feel um, and be more presentable. Um, and do do note that sometimes people are teasing people and asking them to stand up. So <laughs> you could get called out on it. <laughs> um, so be professional, be personable, but don't make it weird. The number of weird things that have been said to me now, because people are so much more comfortable when they're not in the room with you, even if they're talking to your face, um, has, is, has kind of ramped up. And so we're just asking everybody to just dial it back just a little bit. Weird is great. I love weird, but like uncomfortable weird is no fun. <laughs> Am I weird? Yes. <laughs> um, and Maybe then if you're in your home environment and you're just like a little bit more laid back at times. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been interesting sometimes. So, and then, excuse me, um, that last one. So don't even think about pitching or selling. Just don't. If you're just having a first initial meeting with someone, if, you know, I know that uh, I have been in, I have been in meetings where I've been invited to join programs immediately after the, as, as we start to wrap up the meeting. Sometimes I take those meetings knowing that's what I'm in for, but it would just, it would be nice to just have a virtual coffee with someone just for the sake of getting to know them. I know we're all busy, but um, I miss those days. I miss when it was just, let's just get coffee so I can understand your business more. You can understand my business more, but I don't have anything to pitch or sell you. I just want to know more about you. Um, so really like try, try it out and see if your, um, your closed success rate goes up. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's, that's really it for the networking on social and digital. So I'm going to let, um, I'm going to be quiet and let Alicia take it away for advertising and marketing. Yeah, so as an individual representing your company, um, I think, you know, just don't forget to be human. A lot of the things that Nicole was saying, you know, we, again, get behind the screen and we forget how we acted at in-person events. And we try to cut right to the chase and we try to cut corners on building rapports and rapport and relationships with people. That's not going to help your close rates at all. It's not going to help you make real connections. And is it a lot of work? Yes, but was it always a lot of work? Yes. So um, quality over quantity and being human. If you are, so you represent your company as an individual, but if you are running marketing and advertising for your company, so putting advertising out there, putting um, ads on Facebook, there is an element now that we feel brands need to be more human than ever. So I wanted to talk about some of the companies out there. And I gave a lot of credit to Frog and Toad. Uh, they <laughs> give good examples on how to market during this COVID time. And we are no way paid by Frog and Toad because I pulled a lot of examples from them. Uh, but they're a great store. So if you are looking for gifts or to shop local, you can head over to their website. Definitely want to give them credit. They're not our client. No. Um, and I, I want to add, though, that um, their marketing and their messaging and everything is so good that I actually spent a couple hundred dollars on Christmas gifts with them. Yep, so yep. like it, it matters. You know, I was like um, definitely supporting them. Yeah. Yep. Same. Frog and Toad. Definitely one of my favorites. R.I. Spirits as well. Um, a couple. I can mean I can go on and on about all our local awesome businesses here. Ways to support them. But at the end of the day, as a business, whether you are selling a product or a service, it's a digital time and we put low friction transactions. So what that means is that you need to make sure that your customers, your clients, your prospects can get to you as easy as possible. So it's really easy to think about that with an e-commerce product because that way, you know, they're coming to the site. It's really, you know, is their cart enabled? Is there an easy way for them to check out? But even, you know, we saw our clients here on the right, RI Spirits, Great little distillery, room is closed now, they can't do tastings, but they would come out and sit on the dock and you know they would have a drink because they're a distillery and bring out your um, bag to the car um, with their mask and everything. I know they're sitting there without their mask, but they would advertise like, we're doing curbside, we're gonna sit out on the, the loading dock today, drive on by and we'll bring it to your car. So stuff like that, going the extra step. Down here, frog and toad. Not only did they bring the package to your house with curbside drop-off, they launched t-shirts at you while <laughs> yelling at you on a, a megaphone that they were there and they were thanking you for staying home. So they turned that into a huge marketing opportunity. Not only did they remove friction um, from the buying experience by dropping off packages, curbside pickup, everything like that, but they made it into something fun. And if you don't have a product, think about virtual appointments, booking online, um, video calls, any way that you can connect with your customer. And also meet your customers where they are. 
This is not, this has always been true, but it's never been more important. So here's a great example of what not to do. We were mystery shopping a client that I won't name them that we started working with. It was in the medical field and we would email them asking, you know, um, how to get an appointment um, for a new, new client, a uh, new patient. And they would say, call us. And then sometimes when we call them, somebody else would tell us, go to the online portal and book there. And it was just really bad. Like, do you not want business? I don't know, because that seems like what's happening here. So provide that great digital experience, whether you're giving them contactless ways to pick up products or meet with you virtually, or just getting them where they need to go, meet the customer where they are. If they're asking for information via email, make sure you can get them as much information via email or messaging as possible. Now, in addition to digital transactions, we're gonna talk about backing up your messages and being sincere. So I just, this is kind of like a double example here because this is the knock it off class. And you can see like all the awesome things they put on their website to make it super easy. Add to cart button, the price is right there. They tell you it's in stock. They tell you how many days to ship, <clears throat> curbside pickup. Then they tell you you can 10% off your order if you're a new customer. They use a hashtag. So when you get the glass, you can post about it when you get home and put it on your Insta. They have a 20% off. So this is what I'm talking about when we say back up your message with action, make it sincere. We see a lot of companies out there who will use COVID in their marketing messages, but it really is not authentic, sincere. It has, it's not backed up by anything. And I'll give you some examples. So 20% of each sale will be donated to the um, COVID-19 response fund. So not only are they, you know, calling attention to something that they believe in and they're donating at the same time. So we love that. Again, Frog and Toad did an amazing job. Also, <laughs> they, you know, every brand ever, we're about the community. We're in this together, but are we really? And how are you doing that as a brand or a company? You can't just say these things and then not back it up. Frog and Toad, they got a lot of attention for the way they delivered the knock it off phrase, their merchandise, and then delivering those shirts. They saw their Instagram skyrocket and they saw restaurants around them struggling. So what did they do? Because they're about community. They shouted out and took time on their Instagram where they could be selling, selling and selling. Their products were fine off the shelves and they could be pushing just those products, but they took time to go out and find local businesses to feature solely on their Instagram. So this is a great little taco shop on the West side. If you're over there, mm -hmm. um, definitely check them out. It's right around the corner from our office. And then they talked about the easy experience of picking up coffee at Angelina's coffee. So I loved that. I loved, loved everything about frog and toad uh, this year. So here's an example of what not to do. So we have a Ford commercial here. I'm not going to play this video, but I um, it's like enlarged the time clips at the bottom. So the first slide, the way this video goes is we, we're Ford, we're built tough. We made masks when people needed masks. We donated to healthcare workers. We're at second three, second five. Next slide. And we're open, come buy a car from us. So like it's second 13, they literally went from talking about how awesome it is that we're in this together, we're helping you. But by the way, 0% financing for 72 months, come get your car. Second 13, same video. I can't tell you how horrible this is. Don't be that person. Listen, COVID's here, it sucks. There's no way around it. So it is the elephant in the room. You may need to talk about it in your marketing. How is your business adjusting? How are you keeping your um, employees safe? How are you making sure that your customers are safe? How is it affecting your business? Those are things you can talk about, but make sure it's a sincere message. If you are trying to help the community, make sure that you're actually doing something, not just saying we're in it together because a lot of people are not in it the same way you may be in it. You have to remember that. And so that comes to the next point, read the room. So on the right, on the left, again, we have Frog and Toad. This is hilarious. They Photoshop their knock it off shirt on celebrities. I love it. I personally think Michelle Obama should buy one, but <laughs> um, this is amazing. And it, it was fun. It was on point. They donated money. They backed up their whole marketing campaign by not just saying we're here to make money, but we're here to support. On the right, I don't know if anybody's heard of the a moment, most of a moment, something um, commercial that Tropicana did. But the basic premise behind it was that 
Tropicana was saying, hey, parents, it sucks. You have to work from home and homeschool, sneak into the bathroom and drink alcohol in the morning. And that is not how they said it, but it just kind of didn't rub parents the right way. Parents are like, do you do you think it's funny that I, I'm like at my wit's end and I have to hide in the bathroom and drink? That's like encouraging alcoholism. So they had to apologize for this campaign. Um, it just wasn't reading the room. It didn't vibe well with people. They didn't put themselves in the parents' shoes truly. They were just trying to be cute. So it didn't go well. Now I'm gonna play like a quick video because I think this like will sum it up really well. And it's like a 60 second video. Um, so I think we have time. It's yeah. This sums up everything that a brand should do right. Let's see if we can actually hear it. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> whatsoever um you know it just really authentic footage and what was a win about that is it was relatable they showcased their work from home employees how they're keeping their employees safe you're working from home your kids are interrupting your life and while you're trying to work and so are our employees they literally just strapped gopros to their employees heads they showed that they're not just helping any way they can, they, they're not just saying they can help every way they can, but they're actually donating food, dropping off food for customers. They did this program for the elderly, um, people who couldn't get out of their, help, their house, but it was just done really well, authentically. And that's what you need to put out in your marketing if you are marketing um, for a company or putting out advertising messages. Uh, so summing it up, final thoughts, Nicole? You want to back in? <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. So our final thoughts is just to make sure that everybody, you know, to, the, the big takeaways are to be human. So from the sales perspective to the actual, you know, marketing and advertising perspective um, and networking, you are human. Do not lose that element because you're behind a screen. And that's what we see happening very rapidly. You are human. Be human. Be Your brand can be humanize your brand. Make sure that you stay personable. You stay a person um, make connecting easy. So try your best to make things as easy as possible for people so that you don't lose business. Um, engage with people, be there, be part of the conversations, you know, really push them to, um, you know, re, uh, or sorry, respond and react. Um, and then obviously making sure that those marketing messages that you're creating are relatable, timely and sincere. So like Alicia has said, in the examples that she gave are, are perfect for this is like, you know, read the room, understand who you're talking to, understand what they're going through. Um, know that not everyone is going to be able to buy from you because they're in a much different situation than they were a year ago um, and recognize that. And without having to call them out on it, just, you know, change the conversation a little bit. All right. So we definitely <laughs> want to open it up for questions. If there's anything like, you know, specific examples or challenges that you guys are having in your business or even just very specific questions about the platforms, we have time for that. Do you mind if we go back to the full, there you go. <laughs> I have a question for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, I used to use hearsay to kind of place certain times with like the Facebook algorithm of, you know, good times to, to post it. Um, I don't use that anymore. Do you guys ever set up with your clients, you know, like this is a good time to post on Facebook. This is a good time to do Instagram. So they get more views. 
So it's very, it's very specific to um, you and your audience. And so what we usually will encourage, um, you know, our team to do and our clients to do is take a look at the, uh, the analytics, take a look at the insights and see, you know, when are people actually checking, um, you know, when are they active on that channel? When is your audience active? You'll see a ton of content out there from the big brands, Buffer, Sprout, uh, Sprout Social, um, Hootsuite about like, this is the best time to post. This is the best time to post. And that's all well and good. But at the end of the day, it's about um, your, your audience and what you're providing to them. Because if you're providing something interesting that they're going to actually interact with, um, Facebook is going to put it in front of more of your audience. So, you know, timing is great. You do want to be posting when people are actually online. Um, but like, for example, you know, Instagram's best time to post used to be 2 a.m. Nobody's posting at 2 a.m. You know, it just, I, I don't know exactly all of the uh, information that was kind of being brought together behind that, but um, it's more, it's more about the content and less about the time that you post it. If that answers your question. Yeah. Okay. So I think my question is almost around that. So I heard a while back that the, if it's a picture or something, it shouldn't have a lot of words in it. Should you put a lot of words describing that particular picture? Do you have a suggestion on that? Um, I was going to say, Alicia, do you want to take that one? Yeah. Less words in the picture tend to do better, especially on Instagram. So um, it really depends like what is the, the visual and what are you trying to convey? Because then you can also, you know, those group posts where we showcased, um, it was just like a purple background and just like the question in the background, it really popped. So that's, it's not an image. It's just a way to make the, the text more visual on Facebook. Um, those tend to do well in groups and stuff. But in terms of like ads, I would say keep it as visual as, as possible and less text in the image. Um, Nicole, I don't know if you have any. Yeah, I mean, so we know from experience that um, especially on Instagram, um, you know, text heavy images don't do as well. Um, honestly, Instagram is more about faces um, and people. Um, and you can see that, um, you know, from a wide variety of uh, platforms and, and different types of businesses. Um, those are going to do the best because people, especially on Instagram, want to connect with people, which causes the algorithm to catch that, you know, type of behavior, which so there is all a driving force. So, um, you know, as often as possible using faces and, and um, people to connect rather than um, banners to give information. If you are trying to give information, you can use your stories for that, uh, that type of, inf uh, that type of thing. Um, you can use uh, text in images um, and then archive it later. It just kind of depends. Um, but, uh, Facebook, I think is more forgiving. Um, but again, it has to be, uh, you know, people like to see people because that's what they want to engage with. So it, ha it still has to be engaging. Um, that's why memes do so well on Facebook <laughs> and memes do probably well on uh, Instagram as well. I'm pretty sure I follow several meme accounts. So, um, it's a little different from like a meme versus a banner. Um, uh, and then, um, LinkedIn, I honestly, I think, um, pictures just do, uh, I'm sorry my testing says that words do better, conversational type pieces do better on LinkedIn right now. That may be changing because I've seen the way that people are using LinkedIn change rapidly. Um, so I would, you know, check back with me in three months. <laughs> I'll let you know a little more. That little like store, this um, kind of like the equivalent of Instagram stories on the top. Yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if anybody's using it. <laughs> um, yeah. And Sorry, Nicole, where do you see Instagram changing? What, what, are, you, what are you seeing change? Because you said it's typically been like conversational. Maybe people like to engage and talk about things. Have you uh, seen more towards like Instagram, like stories and pictures? Yeah. So I'm sorry, Instagram or LinkedIn? Link, uh, LinkedIn. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, we're seeing a lot more, um, a lot more uh, informal uh, conversations happening on LinkedIn and there's also blowback to that. So there's, it's, it's kind of a back and forth. And I think that the platform itself is sort of at this crux of like, okay, which direction are, is it really going to go? Are they going to adjust the algorithm, um, and the AI to support, um, the, the business conversations that are happening, or is it going to be about the video and the post? Because if it's going to be about the video and the post, you're just bringing it back to Facebook and nobody, honestly, nobody wants that right now. <laughs> a lot of us are, very careful about how we use Facebook because, um, you know, it can be sort of bleh. <laughs> um, so that's my professional uh, opinion and that's been recorded. <laughs> I, I think LinkedIn it's a very technical term. We appreciate that. 
I think LinkedIn is trying to be like more like Facebook and Instagram because, and you know, the other channels too, TikTok, Snapchat, they're very like video, like instant, like pieces of information pushed out there. But I think LinkedIn is stuck in this. It's almost like putting, what is it? Like a square peg in a round hole situation or vice versa, whatever. But like, because they're business, you don't want like no TikTok is all dancing videos. So it doesn't work, you know? So you, they are trying like at the top, they have like these little, the little clips now where you can do the, the videos and stuff. And I think that <clears throat> that could, could catch on, but I'm not sure. Um, it just, again, I think content over any platform. So if, if LinkedIn is pushing video, it will only work if the users learn how to make it work or we'll see some really like, um, people like people with bigger followings make it work for them like uh, you know like the Gary V's of the internet will mm -hmm. capitalize on it because they have video nailed ladies not, do you have yeah. any difference or there's anything with what you shared that would be different if your target is another business as opposed to a consumer well so yeah. I mean the the be human is still definitely uh, central to the conversation because uh, no matter what you're, you're talking, you know, human to human interaction, um, and by business buying decisions can be just as emotional, if not more emotional than, uh, purchase personal purchases. Um, I think the main thing that would adjust would be where you start that conversation. Um, but again, it, it you know, it, it does kind of depend because if you're in, um, you know, if you're in those social groups on, um, Facebook and that's just, that's what the expectation is go for it, start those conversations, start those relationships on Facebook, it's okay. Um, you know, you may find that people are um, more open in certain, uh, on certain platforms um, for connecting and having those conversations. But for me, for me, um, the networking and uh, be to, and like the sales side doesn't really change um, regardless of whether I'm talking to a consumer or a biz, a, a, like a B2, in a B2B situation, I'm still having, um, you know, trying to personalize and humanize and, and build a relationship. Um, I think, um, Alicia could probably respond better on the, uh, like the advertising and marketing side. We have two to three clients that, uh, basically are, they're B2B and run their business, um, off of events. And when COVID started, I remember sitting in a conference room with one of our clients. This is before everything was shut down. It was just kind of like, oh, this thing is happening in oh, two weeks. We'll be back to normal. And one of his conferences got shut down. Our whole marketing plan was around how to bring him to market at these conferences. And we're like, oh, okay, well, that conference isn't happening. Let's plan for the one you know, that's coming up in April. And I remember being in his conference room and we have on the whiteboard, like all the plans for the event. And somebody walks by in the hall and they're like, Oh, that conference was just canceled. And we're like, scratch that marketing campaign. So we literally had to shift his entire marketing campaign to how to connect. And he's a very data business. Like digital was not their deal. They lived off events. So we really had to transition um, their whole marketing campaign. They're in manufacturing in a way. I guess they would qualify for manufacturing, Nicole, but um, <laughs> like they just had to transition their whole marketing campaign this year because of COVID. And he's found ways to connect with people, um, but it was, it was a big change. Now, do you guys think that in-person conferences and networking is gonna come back this year or do you think it's gonna be 2022 before we start to see any sort of group gatherings? I don't know. I, want, I wanna be wrong, but I'm going 2022. <laughs> Um, I want to be wrong, but I, I think 2022, I think that not only are, um, you know, not only are things moving a little bit more slowly than I think we all want, um, but I also think that um, there's going to be a tentativeness to getting back. Mm -hmm. The comfort level. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of the influencers that I follow on like Instagram and Facebook and stuff, they've all shifted and now they're kind of offering these like one-on-one -on -one coachings, but it's all digital. They're not doing any sort of like workshops or anything. We do so. think that this style of like relationship building and business is, is here to stay. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to just be part of um, the overall uh, what we do, um, you know, as uh, with the marketing association, AMPRI, we've found that we can, it, it's so much easier to do this and bring more people together 
um, mm -hmm. than the in-person events that we were doing. You know, will we go back? Yes. But will we also maybe host virtual? Also, yes, because you can reach and touch more people. And, and there's a lot of good points to that. You've got people who were, um, you know, had accessibility issues who can now be there. They can be part of the conversation um, and they can, they can move outside of, um, you know, groups that they were in. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of like challenges as with anything. <laughs> I have a quick question. So when the different social media platforms started, you could um, post on one and then it feeds to the other. And um, given sort of what we talked about here today and the different audiences and the feel and that sort of thing, do you see that as no longer relevant? Yeah, we yeah. encourage that. Our team doesn't even let us do it. They <laughs> won't post the same. Like I, sometimes I'm like, oh, here's a great post, put it on Facebook and Instagram. They won't even post it at the same time. So our team like won't even let us post at the same time, the same content, content on every channel. So, and it works because there I'm like, I'm about efficiency. I love efficiency, but you do have to kind of um, also do what's going to get you the best results. And so our team pushed back and they publish different things, different styles, different formats at different times on all our different platforms which costs us money <laughs> to pay for our marketing, but it's been working. So I, the team wins. <laughs> you can use um, Facebook creator to post, like to kind of schedule out your posts and that will let you do Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. So you can upload the image and kind of change the font around, but be in the same platform. So mm -hmm. it's not yeah. as bad. <laughs> You're not posting like every day. You can kind of schedule it out, but that's still it, time consuming. <laughs> yeah. So for people who are like, oh my God, I don't have the time for that. Um, you know, we'll talk about uh, some of that in our uh, Instagram um, workshop, but just, you know, knowing about like investing your time in the right platform for your business is, is kind of important for you. Um, and there's reasons why um, Instagram is sort of the main conversation right now. Um, and we can talk about that as, as a group and, and really dive in. Um, but um there are engagement challenges. So like if you are posting, um, you know, and you're letting everything cross post, some people forget to go to the other channels and actually like engage with them. And these are social media apps. These are social programs. They want you to engage with them. So you'll, you will, your algorithm, your work, everything will do better if you actually interact with the app um, on a semi-regular basis. Um, so it's something to think about when you're um, thinking about which, pro which platform and program suits you best. Yeah, we definitely, so it's February 12th, same time, same place, virtual. Uh, we're doing the Instagram workshop and I, we hope you guys will tune in because we really do get into that. Instagram is a huge opportunity for businesses right now because I, you know, we don't see business pages on Instagram um, being held back as much like Facebook business pages. You can't really, the reach is so hard on Facebook as a business. You really do have to use pay to get out there or a really creative way. Um, but on Instagram as a business, you can go out and engage with other profiles. And if you think that app is not tracking the time that you spend in the app and giving you points against or for you, that's incorrect. They're totally looking at how you use the app and these influencers and people who have huge followings, either they pay someone to do the engagement and spend time in the app for them, or they're actually in the app, like using Instagram and they get rewarded for that. So they get more FaceTime, their posts are being shown to more people. Does anybody have any other questions? Maybe specific to your industry, uh, before we end, what about those industries that might have a little bit more restriction uh, when it comes to what they can post, whether they're financial, maybe they're legal, maybe they're insurance. Um, are there things that can work that don't compromise that or is that more of an individual thing? Yeah, we work with financial and attorneys as well. So um, financial, I think, is the strict, uh, the most like tight on what you can post and we have to get everything approved, but they're using paid ads. They're using email marketing. They're doing they're huge video, value, video, video. Um, they're doing huge value con like content. And they're also, uh, you know, one of our financial clients that I love what they do is they show what they're doing in the community and just like the behind the scenes pictures of donations and shout outs. You can talk a little bit more about what they do. Nicole, you're close with them. Yeah. So, um, I mean, you know, for financial industries, I think it really comes down to, obviously it has to make it through compliance and we're really, you know, we understand that world. 
Um, so instead of it coming down to conversations around rates and numbers and things like that, it comes down to building that rapport, building that community, being active. What are you doing to get out there? What are you doing to support um, and answering broader questions? So like, um, you know, high level general stuff, because people don't know, people don't know what they don't know. And very few people are actually very, uh, super educated on financial services, on insurance, on, and it doesn't have to be about products. It's about purpose. It's about like, what, what challenge does this solve for me? What pain point does this, um, you know, assuage, if you will. <laughs> um, so it becomes, um, you know, using those conversations uh, to drive a little bit differently. And the reason that we're so big on video in those industries is because you can only post a statistic or, you know, a picture, uh, you know, a stock photo of a family smiling uh, so many times before it falls on deaf ears. You have to show up in those industries because it's that no like, and trust. It's that rapport building. Um, and that's where we, you know, when we, when we get someone who's like, well, I can't do video, we're like, okay, this is your expectation. You know, we're going to make sure that you don't look like a graveyard, but you're not going to get as much interaction and as many leads or, you know, hopefully conversations as if you were, you know, doing this other, this whole other uh, type of marketing. So. so follow us on Instagram and we'll follow you back um, or LinkedIn, whatever is your choice. Um, so we hope to see you guys on February 12th for the Instagram workshop is who's using Instagram here. <laughs> All right, we got a couple hands. All right, cool. Nice. All right. So hopefully we'll get the rest of you on Instagram after the next uh, session. All right. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. If you have follow up questions, they are on all social media, so you can find them easily. Um, and we can um, also get the information from you guys about those special offers from this session and share that with you as well. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you everyone. Thank you. So great to see so many familiar faces this morning.